Hey there, Doom Kids. It's November 22nd, 2022. Did we think we'd make it? 11 22 Thanks for coming back to my channel. My name's Reagan. On this channel, I cover the impending ecological collapse, sixth mass extinction, overshoot, and just general news regarding our future because I feel it's important. Some of my subscribers might indicate to me that they would rather not know something like akin to Cypher and the Matrix. Actually, I, I've been thinking it ever since I got here. <sighs> why, oh why didn't I take the blue pill? <sighs> they would rather take the blue pill, but I think under the pretense that we want to live a long life, we should know about our future, or at least how that's gonna be canceled. Um, this is also, in this video, a message to young people, Gen Z specifically. I'm one gener- I'm, I'm millennial. You might have some hatred towards me in some areas. Not sure why you think I'm- I don't know. I really don't know. But the point is, you won't even make it till my age. I won't make it to 40. We're all in this boat together, um, which is going down and sizzling flames. So in today's presentation, articles I located online, some of them are a little bit older, some newer, um, but the overarching message is that, you know, the long span f frame of what I'm trying to paint here is we're not doing anything. We're not meeting goals. And despite channels like Nate Hudgens going very technical and specific into individual um, facets of the uh, transition or energy infrastructure. The fact of the matter is we're not going to get off the, all the cars off the road. We're not going to decarbonize in time. We're not going to convert all of the buildings and empty hotel buildings and corporate offices to zero, uh, if, you know, efficiency. We're not going to, um, we're not going to do anything. COP 27 was a failure. We can barely get money over to people who need it in the world. Uh, millions, billions are suffering right now. We're not even tending to them. We have lost tending to the earth. So not to be too brazen there, but I got to say it like it is, you know, you got to be really delusional to look outside your window and think that this level of industry can continue on for the next several decades. You, you really got to be something's something's off or you're m m tremendously uneducated or misinformed. Um, because the science is pretty clear at this point. And it's unfortunate that we have to keep this paradigm system going of endless fossil fuel extraction and production because it's our main source of energy. Um, but this is where we'll end up. Where we'll end up crossing multiple threshold barriers for our habitability on Earth. The, the things that we depend on and um, act so reliantly, uh, for instance, habitable ambient temperature, uh, dependable weather seasons, suitable for growing uh, grain at scale and distrib distribution, all of these things are going to be um, just gone, gone by the end of this decade and into next. And I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. So what's the problem? Let's get into some articles. First from NPR, this was published a while back, July 3rd, 2006. Humans wired to respond to short-term problems. I'll just read straight from the, the top. Harvard psychology professor Daniel Gilbert argues that humans are exquisitely adapted to respond to immediate problems such as terrorism, but not so good at more probable, long-distant dangers like global warming. So he wrote a piece in the Los Angeles Times, and to paraphrase, he indicates that in order for something to have a threat to us, even climate change, as insidious as it is, uh, is that it has to threaten us immediately. Not, and it isn't. It isn't threatening us this afternoon. Um, it's over the next couple decades. But if it was Godzilla or, you know, a speeding baseball heading towards us, we would, we would quickly dodge out the way. So our brains evolved over millions of years um, to pretty much disregard bad news six, down the, six months down the line. And in order for something to have really a tremendous threat impact to most, most of the plebes, general population, 
there need to be pretty much four things. They need to be immediately. Um, it should be human rather than, than inanimate. And by now, we have rendered our environment as an inanimate uh, object which we can consume um, for our own ill will. And there should be a moral component. Yeah, it's sudden rather than long. So really, that's, that's three. You know, and it has to have a face to it, recognizable. We, it's, climate change is everywhere happening all the time. It's in the air we breathe, but we are lost in the matrix of social conditioning that's taken decades to ensure that we are deaf, dumb, and blind. And it, it really deeply disturbs me when channels like Lex Friedman has Bjorn Longborn on and, you know, Joe Rogan touting these, this propaganda. You know, they're, they're like the smartest idiots. Not even, same with Davis Wallace Wells, like so much intelligence just uh, soured, honestly. It, it's a disappointment. I already did a video on that. Check that out, disappointment. And while you're at it, hit like and subscribe. So what is going to happen? Um, we can be sure that <laughs> nuclear proliferation is good for no one, um, and climate change is an exacerbating factor of conflict. It will push countries, large and small, to compete for resources to ensure the survivability of their citizens. We're in a nationalistic state in human history. Uh, North Korea warns of all-out nuclear response to U.S. aggression, so it ha North Korea has promised to resolu resolutely react to U.S. threat of nuclear weapons use with its own nuclear capabilities. Their most recent tests uh, flew which outraged the international community, flew 22 times the speed of sound, according to Japanese monitoring systems, which is... Um... So, if you're still here, stay with me. This came out earlier this year. I already did a presentation on it. It kind of slipped through the cracks. I just want to recover this one more time in a different way. UN warns of total societal collapse due to breaching planetary boundaries. Are you listening? Are your eyes perked up yet? According to the United, when the United Nations published its 2022 Global Assessment Report on Disaster Risk Reduction, I'm gonna paraphrase from the article, in May, the world's attention was on its grim verdict that the world was experiencing an accelerating trend of natural disasters and economic crises. But not a si single media outlet picked up on the biggest issue, the increasing probability of civilizational collapse. Why? tell society. Buried in the report, was and it was endorsed by Secretary General Antonio Guterres, is finding that escalating synergies between disasters, economic vulnerabilities, and ecosystem failures are escalating the risk of global collapse scenario. This stark conclusion appears to be the first time that the UN has issued a flagship global report finding that existing global policies are accelerating towards the collapse of human civilization. Yet somehow this urgent warning has remained un reported until now. This report does not suggest that this outcome is inevitable or specify how close to this possibility we are, but this does confirm that without radical change, that's where the world is heading. In addition, we are also 100 seconds to midnight. And if you don't know what that is, Google it. The UN Sustainable Development Goals and the Sendai Framework are a set of social, economic, and legal, political, and institutional measures used to reduce disaster and loss. Both involve targets to 2030, which the world is danger failing to meet. What you need to know, the situation is likely to be worse than acknowledged in the UN's report. Byline Times reported last summer that according to Professor Will Steffen of the Stockholm Resilience Center, two more planetary boundaries, ocean acidification, and freshwater use would probably be also be transgressed that we are meaning that we are breaching six out of nine planetary boundaries if we continue to cross boundaries at this rate is possible we could cross almost all of them before 2030 before 2030 and this is coming from the un guys if your eyes aren't perked up by this point and you don't think life and you think life is going to be peachy at or after 2030, then again, you are a, a tremendously misguided, uh, delusional human being. It's, it's really difficult to, you know, to carry a normal conversation with you. And we're struggling. I mean, we, we can't turn this ship around. And most of my generation and younger has no financial means to, ins to enact change because most of the 
electorate process involved lobbying and paying uh, PACs. Still, we're lobbying in 2022 for the destruction of our own planet. This is so sad and evil on so many levels. And yeah, we don't have, we don't have money. Uh, this is from CNBC Make It. I'm not gonna read the, the story. It's basically about we can't afford to pay for weddings and having children. Surprise there. A quarter of, mil of millennials, a quarter of millennials, are tapping into their emergency funds at least a, a month, and 23% say they've done so to pay for a gift or an event. They also find that 39% of millennials report having no emergency savings. I repeat, no emergency savings. And half say they run, regularly run out of money and have to rely on credit cards for, or family for financial support. This is absolutely appalling. Just appalling. And if we can make a pill for inducing a reaction to long-term threats, I would think that would be much more beneficial than acetifamine, which, according to a study from 2020, 2020 increases risk-taking behaviors. So 25% uh, of the population in the U.S. is taking this medication each week along with junk food, um, destroying their gut biomes, making us a, just a massless horde of stupefied zombies stuck in the matrix. The con overarching uh, goal to control the population is complete. And despite prolific voices like um, Michael Dowd, Nate Hudgens, uh, Kevin, uh, Paul, so many on this platform, it is no match for the level of um, brainwashing that has occurred, simply. It's already over. It's already over, guys. Ace of and make, makes people feel less negative emotion when they consider risky activities. They just don't feel as scared. Great, we can just not feel so scared when our food supply and everything we've ever known gets wiped out by the end of this decade. It wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a social media post unless I just had to mention Twitter because this is some big news. I never enjoyed the platform, to be honest with you. I think the font was way too small, too much arguing, too much blah, blah, uh, words, vernacular. I, no. You know, it needs, I, I'd prefer synthesized information that actually provides something from, from it. Um, but a lot of other people did enjoy it. Uh, Jack White, Trent Reznor, Joe Bonamassa. They are basically leaving, Reznor said, and I just want to read this tweet from, from Jack White because I think he does have a, a somewhat prolific voice. So you gave, and this is what he just wrote, so you gave Trumper, Trumper his Twitter platform back. Absolutely disgusting, Elon. This is officially an asshole move. Why don't you be truthful? Tell it like it is. People like you and Joe Rogan who give platforms to liars like Alex Jones, you come into a ton of money, see the tax bill, despise paying your fair share, and then you think moving to Texas and supporting whatever Republican you can is gonna help you keep more of your money. How could you, how else could Trump possibly uh, keep interest in you? You intend to give platforms to known liars and wash your hands like Pontius Pil Pilate and claim no responsibility? Trump was removed from Twitter because he had incited violence multiple times. People died and were as a result of his lies and his ego, let alone his coup did try to attempt to destroy democracy and our capital. And how about the division and the families broken apart from this rhetoric and what it did to this country? That's not free speech or what the poll decided or whatever nonsense you're claiming it to be. This is straight up you trying to help a fascist have a platform so you can eventually get your tax breaks. I mean, how many more billionaires do you need that you have to risk democracy to, in order to, to, to obtain it. You did a lot of amazing things with Tesla, Elon, and you deserve a lot of compliments in that department. I personally supported the hell out of that adventure, but now you've gone too far in using your power to promote horrible violence, inducing liars who are taking the country and the world backwards. Newsflash, Jack, we've been going backwards for decades now, but you've been kind of ice cocooned in your uh, bubble of fame and, in, and endanger the democracy that made you rich and successful in the first place. I am a believer in free speech, but for example, I'm not going to let the KKK hold a rally at our record label's performance stage. That's one of the platforms we control and we have a say in. It's not town square operated by the government. And if I owned a gas station, I wouldn't be selling KKK gasoline to burn crosses either and then wash my hands as if I didn't help facilitate hatred. You took on a big responsibility with your purchase and free and quote, free speech isn't some umbrella that protects you from that. And last but not least, you know, to wrap this up, everyone, everyone comes to me and says, well, China's the problem. 
Well, historically, we've admitted more emissions than them. At this point, it doesn't matter. I am just covering this for a statistical basis for information. Uh, we are in overshoot, consuming more of the planet's resources than available. I've said this many times on this channel, and I'm going to restate it. So from MIT technology review, these th charts show who is most to blame for climate change. We are all to blame. There's not any fingers that should be pointed. Again, COP27 was a failure, more fingers being pointed. We are really good at pointing fingers and not solving things in a constructive way. I'm not gonna read this article, I'm just gonna pull up some charts here. Top emitters from 1850 to 2021. Take a good look at that. Everybody's to blame. Per capita emissions, take a look at that. Good old USA, we are cranking it out. And one more, here we go, share of emissions. From 1750 to 2021, US did its fair share of emissions, along with the rest of the world. <laughs> so, what can we conclude here? The party don't stop until it stops. There is no plan enacted for degrowth, even if there were. We cannot radically change our energy infrastructure to the degree that scientists are telling us we need to within the next several years. And having children, flying, these are some of the worst things you can do if you have a conscience. If you have a conscience. Live with integrity. Start scratching at your bucket list now. And thanks for your support. This is the greatest story ever told. From Finland to Australia, across both oceans, thank you for being with me during this. It means the world. I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.